Come in, Ray. Hitman! I saw it, I saw it, I saw it! It's right here, Ray. It's looking at me. He's an ugly little spud, isn't he? I think he can hear you, Ray. Don't move. It won't hurt you. Ah! So the Proton Pack is not a toy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Proton Pack is not a toy. My name is Matt, and today I want to talk about something I purchased recently. It is this screen accurate Motorola radio holster that we see Ghostbusters using in the Sedgwick Hotel in the first Ghostbusters movie. And these in Ghostbusters go with the MT500 radios, which I'm going to talk about more here in a minute. But first, I want to focus on the holster. This is something that was brought to my attention by one of my subscribers, Evan Esposito. He was on eBay, found a lot of these, bought them up, and then made them available through Ghostbusters Marketplace on Facebook. And he reached out to me, said, hey, you want one? And uh, I couldn't pass it up. The deal with these is normally at this point, uh, about 40 years into their lifespan, they are super brittle and they will crumble with any kind of pressure. And so I've, I've been very careful with mine so far. I'm kind of debating on whether I want to just kind of have it on the shelf and then maybe get it out for pictures where I have it on my belt. Um, but as far as wearing it like to Halloween, I'm not sure. Uh, if I want to risk it. Um, but it's cool to have one of the versions that they actually used on screen. The interesting thing is this is not made for an MT500 radio. This is not the model that they built for those. This was for HT440 Motorola radios and also the HT90 models. And the ones that they made for the MT500 were similar. Um, the Motorola label was in a different spot. There's a couple of different uh, variations. There was like a piece that connected right here that a lot of cosplayers would cut off to make it look more like this version. They were made of leather. This is made out of urethane. And so there were some differences, but uh, it was something that was put up on Ghostbusters fans on the message board years ago that this was the correct variety. But again, they're brittle, and if you were able to get one that wasn't falling apart, then you were lucky to do so. So I'm happy to have this version, whether I end up using it or not, or just having it on the shelf. Uh, this model is the NLN7444A, and this is the model that has the belt loop on the back. There's also a different model that has a attachment for the belt loop that swivels. And uh, obviously that's not accurate to the movies, but that one, if you can find that one, that one is an NLN7693A. And otherwise, besides the swivel, the front of it is exactly the same as what you see on this version. Now, um, all of the ones from Evan are sold and gone, so I can't recommend that you reach out to him and say, hey, I want to buy one. But if this is something you would be interested in having for your radio, or if you have one of these and you're afraid to use it, kind of like I am, and you would like to have a 3D printed version of it, that has been made available within the last couple of weeks as well by Nathan Duncan. He posted on the Spengler 1984 workbench that he has digital files to print these out that would look basically identical to what we see here. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to put the link for his Etsy shop in the description here in this video, and you can check that out. Now let's talk about the MT500 radios. Despite the reputation Ghostbusters has for having the most obscure, hard to find items for builders and cosplayers to find, the MT500 does not fall in that category. These were Pretty much everywhere for a while. They're still available on eBay pretty much at any time. You can find them between $50 and $150 as I speak right now. You can go to eBay and see what the versions up there are. 
There are many different versions though, and that's what makes it kind of tricky. It's hard to find one that is exactly the same as what we see on screen. If you're wanting to buy the model that we see from the Sedgwick Hotel in the first movie, you're gonna want one of the shorter body ones that uh, is the wider in the back that has the three knobs on the top and a uh, stubby antenna. Now, the thinner version is called the Slimline. This is the Omni model. And you can really tell the difference if you have a Slimline one because here on the back, it's not flat. It has kind of a little bump where the antenna connects. So you'll know if you have a Slimline or not. It's kind of harder to tell if you have a tall or a short version unless you have them standing next to each other. But if you have a short version, the section of the speaker is about the same size as the section without the speaker. So it's about half the radio. So if you have a long version like I have, then you can kind of pretty easily tell that that's not the same distance. There's about five eighths of an inch difference in a tall and a short one. The easy way to tell is if you can see the back, if the screws on the bottom row are a little ways away from the uh, compartment where the battery goes, then this is a tall version. On the short version, the line for the compartment is right underneath the screws. And so that's the easy way to be able to tell if you've got a tall or a short one. For the knobs on the top, like I said, in Ghostbusters, it had three knobs. The middle one is usually the one that is different. And uh, sometimes it's a toggle switch. If it was one that only had two channels where it would go back and forth right there, uh, the switch would look a lot like this one right here. And if it's a four, six, or eight channel radio, it's gonna have the knob there on the top instead. So that's the one that you want to look for. Uh, we don't know exactly, specifically, if it was a four, eight, or six, four, six, or eight, Either way, um, so if you can find one with the knobs in the right alignment, that's the important part. Mine was different on the casing on the back because mine has a clip that goes on there. And that was one of the options that was made available. These are more rare. So I just happened to be the one that I picked up, I don't know, 12, 14 years ago. And I've been able to use this on my belt without a holster because it had that clip on the back, which, like I said, is not accurate to the actual movie. But I have to take the clip off for it to fit in the holster. And again, you can see there's a little bit of a gap here. If I had the shorter version, the bottom of the speaker would butt up against this right here. That's why we believe that the Ghostbusters version was the shorter variety. As far as I know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think these only appeared in the Sedgwick Hotel in Ghostbusters. Um, Peter and Egon for sure had MT500 radios. It's believed looking at the knobs on the top and their alignment and sizes that Ray actually had an HT220 Motorola radio, at least when he's talking to Vinkman in the hallway and talking to Spengler in the hallway. But when he's firing at Slimer in the ballroom, there's a good shot where you can really see the label of the radio. And at that moment, to me, it really appears that he has a blue label MT500 on his holster. So you could probably technically say that even Ray has an MT500 radio, but most people say it's Peter and Egon's and Ray has the HT220. These did show up in Ghostbusters Afterlife as well. And um, probably the ones of the same size, I can't speak definitively on it. And as far as the holster goes, I don't know for sure about that either. So just pointing it out that they are in the movie when Ray and Peter and Winston show up at the final battle, they have holsters with radios in them. And, uh, it's interesting as well that even Egon's ghost has a holster and a radio in it. 
So if you look closely, you can check that out. So even the ghost of Egon carries his radio. So fun little detail to point out there. Now, again, there's other versions and varieties. Sometimes on the sticker here, the label will have Motorola in blue and sometimes it will be in white. Uh, I've already talked about the clip, the antenna. Um, mine has been cut down to be a stubby antenna. It was one that started to be about this tall. You can source out and buy. They're hard to find at this point, some of the stubby antennas, or you can, if you're not going to have any um, actual use for the radio, you can trim down the antenna, which I did. You can peel off the top here they cut it and then put the top right back on as which was i did and it was easy to do and it has stayed over the years and um again there are many other options i'm showing you some pictures here from ebay on some of the different varieties again with the slim line there are some that are even fatter and bigger on the back some with the button here on the top so there's all kinds of different versions but if you're not specific that you want one that looks exactly like the model that specifically Peter has when he's uh, screaming when Slimer is about to hit him, then you can be pretty uh, open to the different versions that are out there and just grab yourself one of these radios. They're a cool piece for your belt, especially if you're starting out and you want to have a very accurate looking piece to have on your Ghostbusters belt, then these are out there and these are available. They're heavy. Um, I have opened up the back. It's pretty easy. You can open up the little part right here. This is the battery compartment. Like I said, toss the battery. You can open up the four screws here and pull out the guts, which I have done. I'm not using it, so I don't need the guts in there. So I pull them out. That helps to alleviate some of the weight, which will hopefully allow my holster not to be weighed down too much by it. So again, just wanted to really show off the holster, give me an opportunity to talk about the radios and the different versions that are out there. And uh, if you have one, let me know the version that you have and uh, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Uh, if you are, again, interested in buying one of the holsters, at least getting the digital files, check out the description of this video where you can find where to reach uh, Nathan Duncan on Etsy to get yourself started on the 3D printed version. Again, those are the digital files. You're not actually buying the holster. You're buying the files to have them printed. So again, check that out. If you've made it this far, please like this video. It'll help me out. And if you would subscribe to the channel, I'm almost up to 1400 subscribers, which isn't a particularly special milestone or anything, but it's a round number. So it's kind of nice. And uh, I'll have more stuff coming up as we approach Halloween and thereafter. So there'll be a lot more coming up here on the channel. Again, thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day.